situations and to show you the theology of perpetual victory even in the midst of storms in the midst of prevailing circumstances the bible assures us that victory is the believer's heritage in christ and should be our expectation at all times regardless conditions and i want to show you by the spirit tonight how believers emerge in spite of any and everything at all are you ready for tonight beauty for ashes i'm teaching you tonight on this subject hoping to give an answer to the subject of hopelessness and despair and please i want you to lend me your attention this message is first for your edification and then that you become an extension of comfort to many who are confused right now asking questions that science may not be able to answer the lord give us understanding in jesus name isaiah chapter 61 we're reading from verse 1 to 3 isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3 isaiah chapter 61 the spirit of the lord it says is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And then the Bible says to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified may the lord bless us mightily tonight in the name of jesus let me start by reminding us that manifesting the possibilities that come with the spirit life is a product of quality training when the believer is not trained you will not know how to navigate yourself through the maze of experiences that are scheduled around your spiritual life both good and bad unfortunately for many believers because they have not been mentored into making sense of any and all spiritual situation they find themselves in offense they find themselves confused they find themselves discouraged especially in the midst of unfavorable situations i have taught you here that training exposes you to the knowledge required for victory while minimizing error and minimizing waste the advantage of training is that it gives you an opportunity to experience victory with minimal error and minimal waste hallelujah the first thing i want to establish tonight is that tragic and unpleasant situations are real tragic and unpleasant situations are real in as much as we are people of faith the bible does not teach the believer to ignore the reality of tragedies and unfavorable situation the bible does not teach us to act as though they were not there we can superimpose them with a superior belief but that it is not unscriptural to come to terms with the fact that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real hallelujah and the effect of tragedies and unpleasant conditions are also real when you lose a loved one the effect is real when you lose your job the effect is real when you go through some turbulent time in your health your marriage your job your church your ministry all of these things are real the bible does not teach us to pretend believing by faith is not the same as pretense are we together the bible does not teach believers to pretend the Bible teaches us to triumph over pain, 
triumph over situations but it starts with recognizing the reality of those situations i need to say this crying and weeping i wrote here over painful and tragic situations is not unbelief the bible makes provision for even believers to cry the bible makes provision for believers to express their humanity decently in the midst and the presence of unfavorable situation the bible is full of great men even patriarchs who had to cry had to weep some of them had to ask god painful questions you talk of abraham and sarai you talk of the nation of israel in bondage you talk of men like gideon you talk of men like ruth hallelujah you even talk of jesus himself john eleven thirty five. 35 the bible says jesus wept hallelujah the bible talks about jonah he was frustrated and he asked the lord to just take his life even elijah himself was frustrated and so it is not unscriptural to come to terms with the reality of tragedies and unpleasant conditions please look at me if you have been alive for as little as one year upon the earth i am sure that you may have faced a situation or two or more in your life that has called for tears called for sober reflection there is no man no matter how spiritual no matter how prosperous no matter how educated who is entirely immune from situations that are unpleasant are we together the faith life does not promise us unpleasant situation it only promises us victory in the midst of or victory in spite of are we learning now I'm teaching on beauty for ashes first point that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real and that you must come to terms with that when someone dies that death is real when someone goes through pain that pain is real when someone loses their job and they no longer have salary that is a real situation hear me again god does not teach believers to pretend we are people of faith and the basis of faith is a superior promise that is greater than the current tragedy he does not teach believers to pretend sometimes we get too hard and we get too harsh on people when their humanity finds expression especially in the midst of painful situations we have people who get disappointed we have people who get pained we have people who grieve and go through very very unpleasant seasons and sometimes in a bit to challenge people to still remain in faith we swing to the other side of the pendulum and we try to strangle away the humanity of people and make them feel guilty for crying we make them feel guilty for taking a minute to absorb whatever pain they are going through and so in teaching this very important sermon tonight the first thing i want you to know is that tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real as a man of god you would think that all i've seen in my life are just miracles and signs and wonders and pleasant testimonies i have cried myself i have cried for others hallelujah we have lost people within the ministry there are people who have come with testimonies that are not the best there are still people till date who are trusting god releasing their faith to be healed in several areas in spite of the many testimonies we already have it takes a lot of honesty to admit this that tragedies and unpleasant situations are real is someone learning already perhaps someone came to church or someone is connecting from across the globe finding meaning where is god in the midst of this pain how could god be there when my child died how could god be there when my wife died my husband died how could god be there when i lost my job did you know that if you do not understand a message like what i'm about to teach you god will be so confusing it will not make sense to trust him and you know pain has a way of re educating and reorienting your mind bringing you to a point where you no longer believe god because it doesn't seem to make sense believing him it looks like the lot of the unbeliever and the believer eventually becomes the same tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real they are real i remember as a very 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 young boy just beginning to love the things of the spirit we used to have one 
gentlemen we're a group of friends who love jesus with all our hearts serving him we just got filled with the holy spirit experiencing supernatural things and then at a point he the gentleman was a sickler i still remember it's many years now and one time he just fell ill the crisis just broke out and i had the honor to be the only person who went with another you know of our, our senior teachers to go and see him at the hospital smiled at him we joked you know and i told him i said don't worry you'll be fine and we'll be praying waiting for you to get fine not knowing that was the last time i was going to see him and a few hours later they told me he had gone i couldn't believe it until i saw the poster with his face i had to tap myself and say you mean this guy is gone let me tell you the truth when you find people crying when you find people going through pain don't be too quick to make them feel foolish if you have nothing to say let your hands do the speaking embrace them in love and allow those tears to sponsor the healing process are we together tragedies and unpleasant conditions are real but the second thing i want us to know is that for the believer in christ the bible has good news and here's the good news romans chapter 8 from verse 28 the bible says romans 8 28 for we know and we know that all things if you're a believer say all things and we know that in spite of the reality of tragedies in spite of the reality of unpleasant situations that seem to weave themselves into our lives at one point or the other my bible says and we know that all things work together all things may not come together but they work together they may not come together but they work together for the good to them that love the lord to them who are the called according to his purposes the called according to his purposes so the bible tells us the second point to note that all things can work together now that's a very expensive statement all things including tragic situations including painful situations including situations that can almost make a man curse god how do you say all things work together perhaps it would have made sense to say all good things work together all wonderful things all hopeful things but the bible authoritatively says all things can work together someone say all things shout it again say all things work together prophesy to yourself say all things are working together speak like a believer say all things are working together even if you are crying say it one more time say all things are working together now take a moment and just meditate on that statement imagine the many things that become all things for you all things mean the death of your father maybe all things mean the death of your mother unfortunately maybe all things means the job that refused to come all things means uh, the, your spouse all things means a painful divorce no matter what it is the bible never says all things come together you can't blame everything on god but the bible says provided it arrived your life it can be made a raw material all things all things do not come from god because the bible defines the character of the things that come from god it is every good and perfect gift that comes from the lord so there are things that do not come from the lord but that provided it arrived the believer's life the intelligence of god remodels the strategy to make all things all things are we learning now so do not confuse what i am saying i am not saying all evil evil does not come from god the bible tells us that that god is full of grace and truth if it is evil we know that it comes from the enemy everything that is anti-god anti-salvation anti-redemption for sure do not let your pain convince you all things do not come from god but god is able to make all things walk together hmm. all things you may have been careless with your job and you lost the job 
the job loss did not come from god it came as a result of your not designing and knowing the principle that makes for increase and excellence but now that you are in the loss what then is your advantage as the believer you put your money in a wrong place and the money disappeared it, it, it may not be god it can be god that led to that loss but now that you are in that situation will god leave you like that no someone say all things ah this is a message of hope say all things begin to reminisce on the many things that make up your all things because our all things differ what what is all things for me may be very different all things your carelessness of yesterday maybe you lived a wayward life as a child all things now that you are saved it looks like there is no hope i can tell you all things all things can work together they may not have come together but now that they are in your life the intelligence of god is vast enough to reinvent a strategy that incorporates that tragedy and produces victory out of it this is the difference between a believer one in christ and one who is outside christ is someone learning so i started by saying tragedies are real unpleasant situations are real pain is real losses are real defeat is real i can tell you that we're not called to pretend we're not called to act as if it's not there it's there and the effect can be very telling on a believer but the believer is one who has access to more superior information one of which is that all things may not come together all things that are in your life may not have come from god but provided it's arrived your life and your destiny space it can work together for the good to them that love the lord and the bible says to them who are called according to his purpose is someone learning romans chapter 8 and verse 18 romans 8 18 what does the bible tell us for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time someone read that sentence after me the sufferings of this present time one more time the sufferings of this present time you will think such a statement should not come from the lips of a man who is full of faith in the body of christ today if you mention this word suffering and you join it with time it is interpreted as unbelief and here is paul Paul who had an encounter with Jesus he makes bold to tell you that there is such a season in a man's life he says the sufferings of this present time the inconveniences the constraints that come with this present season are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us shout amen, amen. so that every time you see sufferings know that there is a parallel to it that is waiting don't just receive the suffering and don't expect glory that the sufferings of this present time whatever name you call it death accident tragedy whatever it is he said it is nothing to be compared with the glory it's like telling a student in school that the suffering you are going through burning midnight candles putting your legs in cold water still remember and all the strategies that you invent to study and push through that the sufferings are not compared to the blessings that come by the time you become a consultant it's a word of hope the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us can i give you more scriptures second corinthians chapter 4 8 to 10 all things can work together here's what paul again says we are troubled on every side how many sides every side that it is possible for a man like job to be troubled on every side trouble you turn to your finances and it looks like it's going haywire then you turn to your marriage and it's almost upside down then you turn to your spiritual life and you find out that it looks like that candle is going down you turn to your relationships and I mean things are just going around your life let me tell you the truth not many people have experienced this statement troubled on every side but I have met people who are troubled on every side by reason of this work that God has given 
I've had the honor of speaking to, praying with, counseling, and comforting people who represent this scripture to the point that when you are done praying, they don't say amen, and it's not unbelief. They are used to pain. They are used to the word not working. So when you say in Jesus' name, while you are shouting and sweating, they are just listening to you. And it is not unbelief. Sometimes pain can stop you from shouting amen. They said it. They just did not voice it out. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary God oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary God there is a steel anointing in the sanctuary there is a stillness in the atmosphere please come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary Back to that scripture the bible says we are troubled on every side yet not distressed it says we are perplexed but not in despair the next verse please it says persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed verse 10 always bearing about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So it's not just pain. It's not just persecution. It's not just to be perplexed and to be downcast. It says we are bearing that reproach. But we also know that the glory, the life might be also made manifest in our body. 2 Corinthians 4.17 I'm giving you these scriptures to establish the fact that all things can work together. Let's read 2 Corinthians 4, 17 together. Ready? Read. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. You see the word there again. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. One more time, Koinonia. For our light affliction, whatever you call it which is but for a moment work it for us now take note of that scripture the bible never said work it for all <clears throat> light afflictions do not work glory for all but for we who are in christ our light afflictions and no matter how long it looks the bible calls it a moment relative to the glory that is coming it says it worked for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory let me give you the last scripture james chapter one i love this two to four james chapter one two to four establishing the fact that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and those who are the called according to his purposes let me read for you and you listen my brethren he says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations please give me amplified you would think the word there just means temptations like being tempted is the word trials 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 what other version niv i'm looking for the word trials it says count it all joy when you fall into beautiful it says whenever you face trials of many kinds knowing this verse 3 says that the trying go back to kjv now knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience you see that word again worketh patience verse 4 
it says but let patience have its perfect work that ye may be mature and complete the word perfect there's the word mature the word entire means complete wanting nothing in as much as we have admitted that tragedies and unfavorable situations are real we must also know that in christ this is a defining point in christ if it is not in christ then your lot your doom is already predicted unfortunately but in christ the bible says all things work together for the good to them that love the lord and to them who are the called according to his purposes now please look up back to the scripture we read the bible says in isaiah chapter 61 verse 3 that among the many things that god is able to give the saints is beauty for ashes please look up how many of you have seen ashes before ashes is defined as the residue that is left after burning happens am i right do you know the process that leads to ashes ashes first starts usually with a tree blossoming beautiful tree then that tree is cut down loses its life till it becomes wood then you would think that was the end of the tragedy that wood is now subjected to fire till it becomes coal and then from coal it finally becomes ashes and the bible says even at that point there is still something god can do about it from a tree to wood that is bad enough because the life is gone are we together now now what is left is further burnt until it becomes coal and then the coal is burnt until it becomes ashes ashes is the final state of anything when it's been burned thoroughly the form the beauty the color the glory is totally gone you call it ashes and the bible says such a reality can be a man's experience are we together pay attention now beauty for ashes now look up when we were in school we were taught something called synonyms and antonyms remember and if you recall properly just dust your english for one minute the opposite of beauty is not ashes if i'm to use an antonym for beauty it may be maybe something else i'm not sure ashes would have been the best word there but the bible says that when god comes he looks for ashes when he finds ashes he gives beauty now one of the things you are going to be learning here is that god is a miracle worker but the way he works his miracles is that sometimes he still leaves you with your water he only turns it to wine but there are times you will have to take the ashes away you will never see it again there is nothing that can come out of the ashes what happens is not is a replacement he is not turning water to wine when he turns water to wine the water is there he doesn't need to give you anything new he will still use the water as the raw material but the bible says there is a way he can look at your life and see that what is there is ashes he will collect the ashes away and give you beauty beauty for ashes <laughs> He does not give you beauty to wrap the ashes with it he collects the ashes you may never see it again when you understand this you will learn as you'll be learning right now that even in the midst of hopelessness there is something you may never see again like your loved one who is dead you may never see them in the flesh consider that as ashes but that god can bring beauty he can put something in your life it may not be equal to a mother it may not be equal to a father it may not be equal to the pain it is not all the time that water turns to wine but if it is god even ashes can be collected and beauty is given back 
Is someone learning now? This is very powerful. When you learn this, you will know that there is nothing called hopeless for the believer. Because in our world today, we perceive the zenith of hope provided there is life. The moment life is gone, whether from a human being or from a thing, we generally say it is hopeless. To me, nothing can be done about it. And you may be right, but walk with me as I show you how believers can walk perpetually in victory. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and ask the Lord to open your eyes. Out of the ashes of my dying today I see the breaking of a brand new day In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified I see the breaking of a brand new day out of the ashes of my dying today I see the breaking of a brand new day In which the name of the Lord alone is glorified I see the breaking of a brand new day Hallelujah In Jesus name now I want to give you six keys very quickly. These are irrefutable kingdom keys. They represent the technology, the law of conversion. How beauty can be replaced for ashes. It happens when you know how to engage these mysteries. For someone who has cried, for someone who 2024 has been a plethora of tragedies, the Lord by this teaching is giving you the solution to your prayer. Is showing you the roadmap out of pain. I know you have cried, but the Lord is saying you have cried enough. Here is the way to come out. Are you ready now? Number one, the first key that gives perspective and brings solution to any condition of hopelessness and despair are you ready number one remain conscious of the love of god towards you remain conscious of the love of god towards you no matter what happens in your life no matter how much you do not have answers to it whether it's a situation of death sickness perhaps someone right now is watching battling cancer you have an autistic child you've lost your job you are losing your home you've lost your ministry things have gone bad hey wire around your life no matter what you lose never lose the consciousness of the love of god towards you jeremiah 31 and verse 3 the first key that represents an anchor the anchor you hold till victory is established the lord hath appeared of old unto me saying yea i have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have i drawn you with loving kindness have i drawn you romans chapter 8 we looked at that earlier now let's go to verse 32 romans chapter 8 the consciousness of the love of god the bible says he that did not spare his son do you know what that means to demonstrate how far the extent of his love for you and i the bible says not even his son jesus was spared but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things there is something you need to know about how much god loves you that can become an anchor when life does not make sense if you lose the consciousness of the love of Jesus you will fall prey to every explanation Satan will give you as to the reason why things are the way they are in your life you can lose your job you may lose your home God forbid you may lose any other thing but let it not be that you lost with it the consciousness of the love that Jesus has for you 
Someone say he loves me. One more time say he loves me. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. One of our anchor scriptures here. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the communion. Koinonia. Of the Holy Spirit. It says let it be with you all. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. No matter what you are going through, the love of God. God, where are you? That it looks like I'm praying and answers are not coming. And the devil tells you, is this how love looks like? You debunk that statement immediately. I may not know what I am going through. I may not even have a sense of the solution. But one thing I may never, I should never, you should never consider in your life is that God hates you. It's a lie. If you hear that, it's a familiar spirit riding through your pain. Someone say again, he loves me. Shout it, say he loves me. Apostle, if he loves me, where is the rent? He still loves you. Apostle, if he loves me, why did he watch my, my brother die, my sister die? Why did he watch me lose the visa? Why did he watch me lose out on the opportunity? If he loves me, why did he allow my business to go down? I tell you, no matter what happens in your life, you are already on your path to hope and recovery, triumph and victory. If you can hold on to this confidence that he loves me. He loves me. He loves me he loves me go down in death never allow the devil lie to you as you watch yourself lose your job and you wave your company goodbye and you're confused not knowing where the next meal will come from no matter what you lose do not lose the consciousness of the love of God through Christ there is victory in knowing he loves me. There is victory in knowing he has a plan for me. Is it not in your Bible? I know the thoughts that I think towards you say at the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. Listen, when you lose the consciousness of God's love for you as a man of God, you are ready for any compromise. Lord, I know you love me, but where, where will I get the bills from? The money. Where will I... Someone say again, he loves me. Yes, sir. No matter what is going on in your life right now, among the many things that you try to give us an explanation, let it never be that you lose the consciousness of the love of Jesus. Is someone learning already? Key number one that can help a man experience beauty for ashes is that you must remain conscious of the love of God towards you. I wrote something here and I want you to listen still on point one. Refuse to be offended with God. Refuse to be offended with God. Refuse to be offended. I think that should be Matthew chapter 11. Please give it to us. A lesson we have to learn from John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 11 please from verse 1 the Bible says it came to pass when Jesus had made an end to commanding his 12 disciples he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities reading to 6 now yeah that's the scripture when John had heard in prison where was John in prison John could not be offended when he was in the wilderness he would not be offended at the zenith of his ministry but when he got to prison many things happen when men are in prison the bible says he had in prison the works of christ and he sent two of his disciples next verse please and he said unto him are thou the one who should come or should we look for another that is the character of offense this was the man who ordained jesus in ministry but now because he had become so offended he's sending a message to jesus that even though i brought you to ministry i saw the heavens open i heard the voice that spoke in light of my pain now i doubt if you are the messiah are you the one who should come or should we expect another look at how jesus responded verse 4 
Jesus said unto him, Go and show John again those things which you do and which do you do hear and see. Verse 5. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Read verse 6 together. One to go. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. He said, John, your problem is not my miracles. Your problem is not my ministry. Your problem is not my person. You are sending a message to doubt my credibility, but what is really wrong with you is offense. Offense can make you speak in a way that you will be surprised. How do you expect John to be asking the credibility and the validity of Jesus? It was John himself. John saw it. He baptized Jesus. He saw heavens open. John, the Bible says, John had the works of Jesus. There are times that God can move so mightily you become offended. The more you hear testimonies on stage here, it annoys you because that was also your prayer request. How could you give someone a second child, oh God, when I'm still asking for one? How could you give someone twins? How could you give someone multiple jobs when I'm still asking for one? This is God for you. Never be offended. I made up my mind that no matter what happens in my life, I will rejoice always. I will never be offended. I know he loves me. Whether I understand or do not understand the things around my life, he loves me. Someone say he loves me. Number two, let's hurry up. The second key on your journey to receiving beauty for ashes. Ready? Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. The power of hope. Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. Psalm 42 and verse 5. Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why is my soul cast down, he said. Why is my soul disquieted? He says, hope thou in God. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. The Bible says, hope maketh not ashamed. Hope, that means hope has a way of eroding shame. When you place your hope in Jesus, then shame is on its way out of your life. Look at me, please. There are three levels of hope. I preached a message years ago on hope and I'm, I'm sure that in the future I'll do one again. But just to teach you, there are three levels of hope you need to understand. Number one, there is hope in the midst of current conditions. So the condition is still there. It's not changed. And so you are hoping that it will change. Hope in the midst of the current condition. Then there is hope in spite of or against all hope, the Bible says. That means that situation has become physically hopeless. Maybe the person you are trusting God to leave has now died. From a biological standpoint, that is a hopeless situation. The burial date has been fixed. But in the midst of it, you can still have hope in spite of. Are we together? So there is hope in the midst of trusting for change. There is hope in spite of victory, in spite of the tragedy. And then there is what the Bible calls eternal hope. That even if it fails within this life, the assurance that you are in Christ, eternal hope. These are the levels of hope. I will say it again. Hope in the midst of current situations. The character of that hope is that it is trusting God that the current situation will change and not become worse than it is. Then there is hope against hope. That means a state of hopelessness physically has happened. 
But the Bible says even in that situation, you can still hope in God. And then number three, there is what the Bible calls eternal or blessed hope. Hope beyond death, hope beyond the grave, hope beyond this life. If you do not have these three levels of hope, you will never truly experience this reality of beauty for ashes hope in the midst of situations i'm trusting god that the joblessness would turn for my favor to become a great job i'm trusting god that the barrenness will turn to twins or triplets you know one of our precious ladies who um i've known her for a while and she sent me a text i'm sure she's following now perhaps from the hospital she's been trusting god for the fruit of the womb and i've seen the pain that this lady has had to go through and just yesterday night or was it this morning this lady sends me a text message thanking god for a miracle triplets god gave her triplets i mean i was i was so happy i said come again you mean was it a mistake say no triplets god for you hope that a negative situation can change that is the first level of hope but that even when that situation closes because you can water a plant that is dying to come alive but when a plant is dead there's no point watering it again water does not resurrect a dead plant it's over but even at that you can still have hope that a plant can grow maybe not the plant you wanted to grow but another one can still grow and then if all fails in this life your consolation is that there is hope beyond the grave there is hope beyond this life someone say i have hope let the devil hear you i have hope and you mean you have all three levels of hope i have hope that what is plaguing me now that is unfavorable will change and may it change in jesus name and then the second level of hope maybe your sponsor maybe your human help maybe the person you are leaning on has gone to be with the lord apostle but your message may not bring my mother back to life i know i understand but even in that state there is still another level of hope that what your mother represented to you god can bring another person to play that role it may never be like your mother but it will cover what her absence would have caused in your life Are you learning now and then when all fails you know that there is eternal hope because i am in christ no matter what happens the bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord who is learning tonight don't forget these three levels of hope i just taught you the one that is taught in church unfortunately and that's why there are lots of immature believers is just the first level hope in the midst of current conditions so when life pushes beyond the gates of your current conditions and what you are trusting god for never happens i like job what's the second level of hope though he slay me yet will i praise him i praise him to see him turn my morning to dancing but what if i never have the child hope against all hope I like the way the Bible puts it. Hope. Abraham now. Who hope against all hope. Against all hope. Against all hope. You were trusting God that your tubes would not be removed from the surgery. But the doctor said, sorry, we have to take away everything. That means there will not be a child. You may not have a physical child. But hope against all hope. That for the believer, even at such point. Listen. Hope it should not only be tied to the arrival of a miracle there are times that hope is not tied to any physical manifestation it is tied to god it is not all the time you hope on the arrival of things there are times that you leave the issue of things and hope in god and the bible says there will be a consolation god's throne is made up of righteousness and justice and he will find a way of meting out compensation for trusting him when you know this about God, you never feel cheated. 
when you hope for things and you are still disappointed you find consolation that in the economy of god your compensation will still route itself back to you because god is not a man that he should lie you fasted and you prayed for two weeks stretch so as to not lose the job so that the loved one will not die and the person died and you say i wasted my time you didn't speak like a believer that investment of prayer will be deposited in another area of your life and the reward will come there are no wastages serving god there are no wastages loving god everything done in the name of the lord has a reward system it may not be in the area of your expectation but i tell you if it is the god of heaven it will still come to you the Bible talks about Matthias. There are seven crowns that the Bible teaches that will be given to the saints. One of it is the Matthias crown. You know who a Matthias is? One who died for Christ. Not everybody who died for Christ wanted to die. Some of them wanted to live. But for Christ they died. And the Bible says even at that, because they trusted God, if God does not compensate them, then he's not faithful and just. So there is a crown for them. You will see them and you will know that these ones were the ones who endured for the cross to death. You're not a man. Oh. You're not a man. Oh. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man. Oh. You're not a man. Oh. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, is no one like you. No one like you, Father, no one like you, Master. You're the God of everything. Never lose hope in the Lord. Never lose hope in the Lord. This message for someone, these three levels of hope should comfort you. Because most people who are not mentored methodically, when what they are hoping for does not come to pass, they feel disappointed and they don't know how to give answers again. Did it make sense that I fasted and prayed and the pestle still died? Did it make sense that I was trusting God that I would get the visa and it still did not happen? I trusted God that my colleague would get the job. I even fasted. What happens when the current situation still does not change? Move to the second level of hope. There is hope for change in the current situation, but there is hope against hope. Hope against hope. Yes, the person is dead now. Yes, I've lost the job now. Yes, I had to go through the surgery. Initially, I didn't want to go through it. But now, I may not from a physical standpoint have any child again. But I still hope in the Lord. Hmm. Is someone learning? always hope for and expect the best god's best in everything please look at me i believe and this is my personal understanding of god i believe that god only has the best for my life so as i partner with god to see his word come to pass in my life i have indoctrinated myself beyond repair that it is only God's best that is allowed to happen in my life. I truly believe that. Hmm. I truly believe that. Are we together? When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the floor. I will be still and know you are God. My soul be still and know you are God. Hallelujah. For someone, God is speaking to you. You have given up on God. You have given up on church. 
you've given up on everything spirituality after praying after fasting after releasing your faith after sowing seeds after doing all you know to do perhaps things did not change and it degenerated maybe a health condition maybe your finances maybe your marriage you trusted God that a divorce would not happen you release your faith but it still happened you trusted God that the surgery will not happen but it still happened you trusted God that the house will not be repossessed unfortunately was still repossessed let me tell you there are three levels of hope don't learn just one there is hope for change in the midst of the current situation and when it fails move to the next level of hope there is hope against hope and even if that fails you console yourself that there is an eternal hope that god will reward me for standing even in the midst of no result if you're understanding me say amen, amen. number three the third key i want to give you beauty for ashes this is a miracle that is happening to someone right now are you ready never lose your joy never lose your joy you will think this is very simple and elementary never lose your joy habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 17 to 19 very quickly habakkuk 3 17 to 19 although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls next verse yet someone say yet it's true that i'm crying yet i will rejoice it is true that things don't seem to be making sense yet i will rejoice i will joy in the god of my salvation nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 says the joy of the lord the joy of the lord the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord is your strength never lose your joy when satan mets out an attack to your life let me tell you he's not looking for your marriage he's not looking for your children he's not looking for your health he's looking for your joy he knows that a joyless believer is a defeated believer are we together now make up your mind to maintain your joy and satan will use men to keep saying things the more depressed you are the more satan is happy someone learn to shame the devil from this service that even if it does not make sense sit in the midst of fire and still rejoice yes sir i rejoice in the god of my salvation I don't rejoice in the situation there's nothing to rejoice in there but i rejoice in the god who can save me is the word jehoshua where you get joshua god who saves the one who is my salvation never lose your joy culture yourself as a believer no matter the tragedy now joy is not the same as happiness you don't have to be smiling to be joyful but eventually joy leads to laughter did you get what i said joy is of the spirit is of the holy ghost i'm not saying be a clown no there are times that tears are coming out of your eyes and yet you are full of joy joy is a shield against offense when you have joy it's impossible to be offended when the devil wants to attack you he will make sure he brings down the gate of joy then he can penetrate and deal with many other things in your life I've made up my mind that I will not lose my joy. When you lose your joy, you will lose sleep. When you lose your joy, you will lose many other things. Some of you are looking by far older than your age. You are say 30, 35, but you have been mistaken for 51, 55. Why? The absence of joy is telling on your physical health. When you tell people you are 30, they say you are joking. They think you are lying. They think you are reducing your age so that you get something maybe a job but that is that is really your your age it's just that pain and lack of joy has added an age to your life that should not be are we together someone will see you a young lady good afternoon ma and they think you're a mother of four five children just because there's no joy rejoice in the lord always 
and again i say rejoice someone say i rejoice prophesy say i rejoice i'm not downplaying your pain ladies and gentlemen this is how the economy of the kingdom works when you want beauty for ashes you must remain in joy joy is such a mysterious spiritual force it is the atmosphere that allows for harvest if you are not in joy the possibility for harvest is not even there the bible says they that sow in tears will reap in joy like saying go and collect your food in the kitchen you will have to enter the kitchen to pick up the food if there is no kitchen then the possibility for getting your meal is not there joy is beyond a feeling it is a spiritual atmosphere like a cloud you can step into a realm called joy and live there did you get what i said that it is beyond a feeling i feel happy i feel joyful you're not entirely wrong but joy must move beyond being a feeling of of glad tidings to an atmosphere it's like it shields you someone again say i rejoice that you walk out of this place in spite of what is happening around our nation in spite of what is happening around the globe find a reason to rejoice you don't rejoice in the situation you'll be lying you rejoice in the god of your salvation who can change that situation again say i rejoice so next time you go and write down the list of all the things challenging you and while the devil wants to lie to you you are maintaining the consciousness of your love for jesus maintaining hope expecting the best of god in everything and then holding on to that anchor of joy joy number four is someone learning tonight the fourth key when you want to turn beauty or you want to receive beauty for ashes never stop believing and engaging the word of god never stop believing and engaging the word of god regardless what the devil tries to tell you using your current situation never stop believing and never stop engaging the word of god don't say i prayed and it did not work so i will stop don't say i i i spoke no you never stop when you are in the midst of fire the three hebrew boys remember daniel chapter 3 you would think that because they were going to be thrown in fire they would say well that's it their first the first level of hope was that they would not enter the fire but they said even if we are there and we eventually die oh king we will not bow i can imagine the bible does not record it but i can imagine that in the midst of that fire maybe someone was quoting something the little they knew the god of abraham isaac and jacob you are a shield and a defense for me and they saw the fourth man he just stood there and the bible says they were men who the fire had no power over is someone learning second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 never stop believing and engaging the word of god second peter 3 and verse 9 give it to us media the bible says the lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness there is a way men count slackness after two years three years if god has not come he said god is slack but the bible says the lord is not slack concerning his promises therefore never stop it has not manifested but never stop are we together hebrews chapter 6 13 to 15 never stop for someone this is a prophetic word for when god made a promise to abraham he says because he could not swear by no greater he swore by himself saying surely blessing i will bless thee and multiplying i will multiply thee and so after he had patiently endured do you know what it means to wait for God for over 25 years? If you were Abraham's colleague, most likely is when your children will be getting married. That's when Sarah, a woman who should be preparing to be a grandmother, that's when she was receiving her child. And yet the Bible says God is not slack because the one child that came was equal to a nation. Is someone hearing now? 
you've trusted god for two years and you're about to write the word off no nah, nah, don't talk to me about that that's word again I'm, I'm tired i've prayed don't talk to me about giving again i don't believe it no god is not slack the bible says so after he had patiently endured who spoke to abraham but the bible says the word of god is quick and powerful so why did abraham wait 25 years there are things we may not understand on this side of god's kingdom like why god had to wait 30 years why he had to die for three days couldn't he go to hell and finish everything in five minutes was hell so difficult that he spent three days there there are sides to this kingdom economy that is not given to us to know so that we do not be offended through our words we give god praise and exhaust the level of knowledge given to us the hymn writer says we will understand it better by and by is someone learning now because sometimes bringing foolish explanation to scripture can cause us to err in words and sin against God. There are many things that may not seem to add up yet. Why did Jesus go to the grave for three days? He healed people instantly. Where did he keep his power? Did it take him that long? What kind of battle was he fighting? Is someone learning? listen to me never stop believing and engaging the word of god and i've taught you that there are three ways to engage the word of god number one you study the word of god number two you listen to the word of god number three you declare or confess the word of god these are the three levels of engaging the word as revealed in scripture let me repeat it again that to engage the word profitably number one you study the word of God to show yourself approved unto God. Number two, you listen to the word of God because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number three, you confess the word of God because you declare thou that ye might test be justified. If you are not studying the word of God, you will lack spiritual intelligence. If you are not listening to the word of God, faith will not be built. And if you are not confessing the word of God, you cannot partner with the spirit to create and manifest realities and possibilities in your life. You understand me so far? Shout amen. amen. Never stop believing and engaging the word of God. Never stop believing and engaging the word of God never stop believing and engaging the word of God no matter what happens I believe God's word many years ago I used to say this that God forbid but even if I die of sickness the last word that will come out of my mouth is by his stripes I am healed and I really meant what I was saying you see most believers really do not believe the word most believers are scientific Christians I say that to mean we are Christians whose faith surrounds logic and stops there it shows because every time it looks like there is a bit of delayed manifestation we fall like a pack of card no something happens to you when you are fully persuaded fully persuaded that God is faithful fully persuaded that God is able fully persuaded that God is loving hallelujah never stop believing and engaging the word of God you get up in the morning in the name of Jesus I decree and declare this growth is leaving my body I confess by the power of the Holy Spirit that by his stripes I am healed I place a demand upon the finished work of Christ in Calvary over this situation I release my faith in spite of this report I decree and declare that I believe the report of the Lord a time will come you will feel like a fool confessing because you've been confessing for six months and your finance seem to went to, to go down your your health seems to go down your children you are laying hands on your child and you are saying the name of jesus this prodigal son will get born again by afternoon they call you that you should come and pick your child from a prison cell and once that, that you hear that kind of thing the devil will say keep wasting your time i have taught you koinonia let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so do not let anyone make you believe that confessions of faith is gibberish now the value to confession is that it is first deposited in your heart as a revelation 
so for many people they just confess blindly the journey to confession starts with conviction that is within your heart are we together for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto soteria salvation if you do not believe with your heart you will just be speaking an unbelievers gibberish so you take out time to meditate on scripture until it becomes spirit and life but when that deposit is made within your spirit you speak the righteousness of faith speaks the righteousness of faith speaks it is not silent it speaks that which god has done it speaks that which you desire god's word to make happen in your life what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them the bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified look at me if you have stopped engaging the word of god then you are partnering with satan to keep those ashes until they rise to a point where they bury you yourself are we together now god is coming tonight desiring to give you beauty for ashes but you see i have taught you that god does not do anything outside of his word the word of god defines the jurisdiction for the administration of god's power let me say that again the word of god scripture defines the boundary the jurisdiction for the administration of god's power god's power as mighty as infinite as it is works only within the jurisdiction allowed by his word because he has exalted his word even above his reputation is someone learning now so if you expect god to move superstitiously over your life i hate to disappoint you but you might be very disappointed there has to be a scriptural basis for the power of god arriving in your life here's what mary said be it unto me not according to your power be it unto me according to your word be it unto me according to your word not according to your power the energizing was sponsored by his power but that power was carried through the tray of his word i've taught you that the word of god is like a tray if i ask you to bring water or bring a meal for me if you truly honor me you will not carry water and put it at your back pocket and remove it and give me you will place that water on a tray place your plates there that tray is the word of god with it comes god's power with it comes god's favor so when you want god to bring his power his favor the vehicle the tray that conveys that power to you is his word if you ignore the word of god you are ignoring the possibility for change if you are ignoring the word of god you are ignoring the potential for change whether it is to turn your water to wine whether it is to replace ashes for beauty you will still need his word nevertheless at thy word and he said come and he began to walk is someone learning now apostle i don't have a job use that time to learn his word use that time to hear his word use that time to rewrite your possibilities in the spirit apostle i'm i'm in the midst of pain and i cannot find comfort anywhere get the word of god rather than hearing nonsense get the word of god rather than going on social media and tear the remaining part of your faith into many slices there are people who carry their pain their faith is on reserve and then they go to social media and they don't use the content properly they listen to nonsense for 30 minutes and at the end of it there is zero faith it was on low but by the time social media is done with you zero faith and the devil says finish up because i'm coming that's what he's waiting for faith is a product of god's word faith is a product of God's word you ignore the word of God you have ignored the potential for change when we talk about beautiful ashes 
we say that with respect to the word of god john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god are you learning and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning i like verse 3 the bible says through him all things were made by him and without him outside of him outside of him ignoring him was not anything made ignoring the word nothing can be made hallelujah i speak over someone tonight whatever has drained your passion for the word of god maybe anger maybe offense maybe pain maybe tragedy maybe prolonged situations you carry your bible in the morning and you just throw it back because quite honestly you are not interested in this church thing again you carry a message to listen to and you just delete it and you're not ready you throw away your phone in the name of jesus let passion for the word be reignited in your spirit man let passion for the word be reignited in the name of jesus never stop believing and engaging the word of god can i give you number five the fifth key that is responsible for the business of receiving beauty for ashes that comes as a solution to hopelessness and despair to tragedies and unfavorable situations ready pray without season pray without season pray without season philippians chapter 1 and verse 9 we have learned through spiritual intelligence that your darkest moments should be your most prayerful moments your darkest moments should be your most prayerful moments your darkest moments should be your most prayerful moments one is it 19 119 philippians 119 please for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ i know that this financial situation this health situation i know that this ministry situation this whatever situation this legal situation i know that it shall turn to my salvation through your prayer through your prayer psalms 18 and verse 6 pray without season in my distress i didn't just cry i didn't just lament i didn't just call on people to sympathize with me in my distress i called upon the lord and cried unto my god and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even to his ears in my distress i cried unto the lord believers hear me when you are in your darkest hour obtain grace to pray obtain grace to pray this is why god gave us the prayer language because there are times that you may not even be able to make sense of the things that are happening around your life at such points you engage in the spirit because those dark moments can be moments of intense warfare intense warfare that satan is determined the onslaught of hell will come at his best against you your children your health your job that's not the time to watch and fold your arms any man who is a general in the army you know that when you hear a battle cry that is not when to dress in mufti and fold your arms no you go back and put on your warfare regalia and carry the whole armor of god and go to the place of prayer and engage with power until victory is established many believers lose out on situations that victory is already established there because they could not pray through prayer is like birthing it's like the process from pregnancy to birthing when a woman is pregnant and after three months all the discomforts that come with pregnancy she can shout at the child but the child still remains there and the woman too wants the child to come but when she gets to her ninth month she becomes sensitive unusually sensitive because at any point she can be given her edd plus or minus she gets the clothes ready she gets everything ready the car always having fuel there because at any point 
she can be in the marketplace shopping and then contraction will start and before you know it from that place she does not return home again but she was ready everything was already in the car the bible says be sober then it says be vigilant be vigilant don't be careless study spiritual patterns this attack on my child this thing i'm seeing that happened to my elder brother i notice every july every august it's like there is something satan wants to do i i i, I need to deal with this thing i notice that there is every july every august somebody must die I, I'm, I'm coming by faith to stop it and so when the season comes you know that there is a programming in the spirit that that event will always bring tragedy that's not the time to fold your arms and carelessly go around wasting away you take on your priestly regalia it's time to pray without ceasing hallelujah it's time to pray without ceasing there are specific periods in my life where there are moments of intense sensitivity because there are times when God's word comes to me it is how God works with me he does not speak to me all the time anyhow my work with him has made me understand certain kairos moments and when i get to those times i know that the devil also waits around the corridors of those seasons because your heart is open at those seasons and he wants to appear as an angel of light that is the time when you are sensitive many believers are careless it is the reason why sometimes some tragic situations even happen in the first place be sensitive be sensitive you are in a strategic period of your life be sensitive maybe someone i'm speaking to you you may need to take a few days after today before you make a major decision that destroys your life take three days fast and pray god grant me revelation should i leave nigeria or should i stay don't take that kind of decision over coffee you are joking that means you don't love your destiny are we together now no there are decisions that are too serious too destiny implicating to take them carelessly you go to the place of prayer until you have prayed and prayed don't trust what you hear it may look like god till prayer distills that voice you will find out that satan came nicely appearing as an angel of light how many things do you have as plans you see them well calculated until you take them to the place of prayer and you watch the red biro from the throne striking a lot of things that are fabrications of your own desire and you credited them before your prayer to the voice of god prayer distills prayer purifies is someone learning pray without ceasing you want beauty to be turned to ashes pray without ceasing pray without ceasing pray for your life pray for your ministry pray for everything around you remember i've taught you in, in Acts chapter 12 they caught james and beheaded him and the church kept quiet they now caught peter waiting for you know passover so that they will kill him also but the bible says prayers was made by the church unto god for him and god sent angelic assistance and that night as they were planning for the next day the morrow to destroy him that night they had a visitation and god delivered peter out same thing happened to paul and silas the bible says at midnight they prayed and they sang loud enough and the jailers heard them suddenly there was an earthquake it came and rattled the prison opened all the doors and salvation came not only to the apostles but also to the jailer and his family when you pray and pray sincerely when you pray and pray non-pretentiously unto god not just to satisfy the each of religion when you pray and it is fervent it is effectual i tell you sincerely it produces power in the spirit hallelujah number six this will be the sixth point very quickly what is the sixth key on your journey to receiving beauty for ashes stay connected to the larger family of believers stay connected to the larger family of believers 
every time tragedy strikes that is the worst time to isolate yourself from the larger body of believers we see this apostolic model in the book of acts the early church when persecution broke they found comfort being in their own company stay connected to the larger body of believers acts chapter 4 22 and 23 acts chapter 4 hallelujah it says for the man was above 40 the man who was healed now who the miracle of healing was showed verse 23 it says and being let go they went to their own company the apostles now they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them do you know that it was on account of this they went to their own company and on hearing they chose to pray remember the prayer in Acts chapter 4 it was on account of this report the church said let's pray and they prayed together that you grant that signs and wonders be wrought through the name of your holy son and the Bible says in response to that prayer the building shook and they were filled with the Holy Ghost again this is why spiritual families are very important when the devil wants to destroy you he flatters you into believing that your spirituality alone and by yourself is sufficient you do not need the power of a spiritual family and when disaster strikes usually through offense church failed me i don't like this one this one happened i don't like this church there's favoritism there's tribalism there's this in this church you may be right but it is still a risk to be alone they return to their own company hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 the bible says to neglect not the gathering or the assembling of yourselves hebrews 10 25 please give it to us to neglect not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching what do you get from a larger family of believers strength support and comfort what do you get from a larger body of believers strength support and comfort we make it as a principle in this ministry that when people within certain departments have issues around their lives it's almost mandatory that there has to be a system where the people within their department can cover to, for them providing strength providing support when someone is bereaved that person should not be left alone not when you are in the larger body of believers let me tell you the truth there are many people whose situations would have been dealt with if they had the support of the larger body of believers when the believers were persecuted they came and they were among themselves they prayed together you have heard me say that community kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values there are times that you are in the midst of a bedeviled community it's difficult to freely and confidently practice your faith you will need the covering you will need the support you will need the strengthening of fellow like-minded believers if you decide to remain alone you will compromise without knowing you can be in an office where only one person out of 10 20 people is a genuine believer i tell you eventually those those thorns and thistles will choke on you until the seed refuses to grow you need a larger body of believers whatever fights you whatever makes you to ignore the gathering of believers are we, are we seeing that now it is of the devil is the reason why you see making an announcement of a virtual service today is simply because of a special situation to protect our people is is is, is our response to the security situation and our response to responsibility but there are many believers who they make it a habit they cannot identify with any spiritual family. They freelanced anywhere at all as their passions drive them. It's a risk. 
one day disaster will strike and if you do not have a spiritual family where you draw support where you draw strength where you draw comfort there are many people who would not have been embarrassed the spiritual families they are part of if a good spiritual family should be able to step in and cover for their shame let me tell you something with family even if you meet your child misbehaving outside you solve the problem outside and call him inside remember that's what happened to you they can spank you left right and center inside the house but when they've solved the problem outside number two it matters where you are found anybody who finds you in your father's house treats you with honor but when you are found on the roadside they treat you like a prostitute or a fugitive are we together now when a young man wants to get married to a lady if he comes and finds her in her father's house like isaac found rebecca and they went to the father's house they would treat you with honor with dignity because of where you were found but when they find you by the roadside sorry to play with your mind that's the difference between a prostitute and a responsible lady that is found somewhere nobody asks a prostitute where's your father where's your mother where's your uh, elder brother that's not their business they may not even know the person's name but when you find someone at home it is with honor and with dignity is someone learning now many of us stand naked and careless spiritually and we do not know the power of spiritual families so when disaster strikes there is nobody let me tell you this even when you lose your physical family do not lose your spiritual family it's possible for your physical family to go maybe death or whatever make sure you stay connected genuinely by covenant to a spiritual family you enjoy the blessings of intercession you enjoy the blessings of covering you enjoy the blessings of covenants that that family has with God there are many people who receive certain results before they even grow to the level of spiritual intelligence to command that result themselves the advantage of a family look up please if you are a father and you go and hunt meat does your child need to know how to hunt meat to eat it no he enjoys the blessings of a responsible father one day he will grow to become a hunter but meanwhile he will not suffer because his father can be a leverage for him and even when that son becomes a prodigal son the fact that there is still a home and a father back at home that means there is still hope imagine it is better to have a prodigal son than a prodigal father because a prodigal son has where to return to a prodigal father does not have where to go to Are we together do not neglect and when I talk of the gathering of the Saints I hope you know that just because you come around does not mean you are connected being connected genuinely is by covenant and by understanding there are people who can sit down anywhere but they are not connected at all you know they are not connected because the grace does not speak when they tell you ah i'm connected to this vision this grace this ministry people have to look and say no something is wrong it's not true you cannot stay in the kitchen for five hours and then don't smell food and there was soup there everything is being prepared there red oil flying around and you are wearing a pure white shirt and nothing even touched you come on now what kind of shirt are you wearing we need to verify whether it's the kitchen you really are or you are calling the place you are a kitchen are we together there's a way you hug someone and you can tell what food the person cooked not even that he was at the kitchen um looks like this is serious african soup here something is going on and say how do you know it's not word of knowledge the implication of presence proximity are we together you believe me there are many people who do not carry that gene they do not carry that engracing at all they that be planted in the house of god not they that be planted it matters where you are planted the house of god he says they shall flourish in the courts of our god that in old age they will be fat and flourishing fat and flourishing 
one of the reasons why God connects people to spiritual families is because he knows that transformation and empowerment is a gradual process are we together now and there are certain spiritual realities that people need to experience but their level of growth cannot sponsor that which they desire so God plans them to enjoy the leverage of covering the leverage of graces the leverage of covenants while they are mentored to maturity while they are mentored to maturity so there are many attacks I will tell you sincerely upon many believers that are unnecessary is because the devil found them naked the devil found them defenseless and void of spiritual intelligence and he took them for a prey please if you have seen a lion attacking an antelope most times the antelope or the elephant or whatever animal even though the lion is the king of the jungle it's not able to attack them you know why because the mother and the that they are a herd they even though the lion is powerful they can kill it so he waits for one who veers off carelessly veers off enough and then he runs to that one and picks up that one and i have watched sometimes where even as the lion is running there the bigger elephants also run they leave where they are going and three or four of them come and they push him and sometimes they kill the lion I have watched i think a buffalo or one of these animals lift a lion two three times and he dropped dead don't try my child again the power of family there are some of you you'll be surprised some of the prayer we are praying we don't even know where the body is coming from it's because of you your carelessness is giving satan room somewhere but your advantage is that covering and the lord says wake up something is about to happen and from nowhere from the realm of the spirit while the devil thinks he's so close to you you hear tongues thundering from the spirit ah destroy it not for there is a blessing in it destroy it not now don't think i'm playing games with your mind this is how it works hallelujah To remain conscious of the love of God towards you to always hope for and expect the best of God in everything to never lose your joy regardless what happens around your life to never stop believing and engaging the Word of God to pray without ceasing the darker the night the more tragic the situation the more fiery and aggressive and intentional and consistent the prayer should be and then to stay connected to a larger family of believers now listen to this ladies and gentlemen i told you earlier on that god can turn water to wine let me tell you how that miracle works he doesn't introduce anything new it is the water you already had he will simply turn it to wine the size may not be affected maybe the color and the taste and the chemical composition that's all that changes but when you stand before his majesty with ashes there are times that nothing can be done over that ashes so here's what he says bring it now you have to trust him enough to take the ashes I told you ashes is the final state of burning from a flourishing tree to a log of wood to burn coal to ashes a tree wood coal ashes and he says give it to me when you hand it over to him to you it may look like every situation is hopeless then you see him coming with a garment beauty he calls it and he wraps it around you like the father of Joseph wrapped the coat of many colors now I don't know what it was before it became ashes it's amazing that when anything becomes ashes you cannot really tell what it was before it is not always wood when they cremate men they also become ashes so it's not always wood even flesh when you burn it intensely it can become ashes when bones are crushed and burnt they become ashes ashes does not reveal what it was before so sometimes listen carefully the law of receiving beauty for ashes is that you must trust God for grace 
to forget about the ashes because you cannot receive the beauty still remembering the ashes remember ye not the former things i know that you lost your job but for as long as you are still thinking about that job lot for as long as you are still reminiscing on sodom and gomorrah you didn't carry everything i know you left your chair in the parlor while it is being burned but do you know that god is able to do something in your future you may never see that chair again you may never see your loved one again you may never go back to that office again maybe that relationship did not work and it's for real it's gone never comes again most believers cannot go forward because their heads are still at yesterday their bodies are trying to move forward but they miss yesterday so much they do not even see what god is doing today the law of conversion receiving beauty for ashes demands that you forget about what that ashes was that ashes was a beautiful plant the picture may be with you but you have to stop it from distracting you i know that you once had a father a mother you once had brothers and sisters and now they've slept the slept of the sleep of death you may not forget them but you cannot allow that pain to stop you from moving forward agreed you can have moments of grief for a while but the time must come you will tell yourself i need to move forward you lost the job 10 years ago the company has even been folded don't sit back and say ah, I, I remember my five million was in that company my 10 million was in that company all oh, the days of railway unfortunately it has gone i worked in a typewriting company it will never return again stop missing a typewriter there are better gadgets that can serve you will not have the privilege of punching them one by one again are we are we together but you can have a better presentation now hear me do you have the courage to look at the ashes that you've held so dearly because to you it is not ashes you still remember the tree you still remember the wood you still remember the coal and the ashes so when you hold it others are looking at dust but you are looking at a story a story of decline a story of pain but do you have the courage to look beyond it and receive his beauty jesus is saying give me the ashes listen to me ladies and gentlemen that situation of pain you cannot live like that after 10 20 years yes the job issue has come yes the surgery happened and your womb was taken away yes i now your legs were amputated unfortunately sadly yes the accident happened it truly did yes this happened you lost your job yes you went to jail for five years now you are released and your life listen meditating on yesterday and remaining there is like holding on to the ashes but jesus is standing tonight and he's saying i'm not going to turn that ashes to something else it is still a miracle you are waiting for the ashes and you wish jesus if you can turn the ashes to coal the coal to wood and the wood back to a tree this is what i want you to do are you not the god that turned water to wine and then he says i'm also the god that gives beauty for ashes so that if your miracle does not afford you turning ashes back to coal back to wood and back to a tree it may never happen again but he can give you beauty and look at me i wish i had time i would have explained to you what the bible calls beauty beauty there does not mean looks beauty means everything that can take away pain beauty means everything that can erode the memory of pain and tragedy and suffering let me tell you if it is the god of heaven there is something he can do in your life your mother may never return in this side of god's kingdom your father may never return your siblings may never return the job may never come again unfortunately and sadly maybe the marriage may never work again unfortunately but let me tell you the truth look at those ashes and present it to the master let your hands be empty enough then watch what else he gives you he will give you beauty for us.
ashes beauty so someone looks at you and says you've been an orphan for 10 years but it does not look like that in your life god raised other parents from everywhere to cover for you to a point where if you tell the story people will say it's a lie you mean you've lost your job for 15 years but today instead of a job you never went back to the job but god gave you a business a flourishing business you lost the ministry but now God has called you and placed an apostolic and a prophetic anointing upon you to an extent that those who knew you as a man of God 10, 20 years, if they, if they say you, they will never believe that you are the one carrying this power again. Do you know Joseph never returned back to his father's house? Read your Bible. You taught Joseph from Egypt. He missed his home. But Joseph did not receive the miracle of turning water to wine. Joseph received beauty for ashes you thought that joseph would go back home he wanted to go back home he missed the playground he missed everything that was happening there but sometimes god does not take you back by turning water to wine he tells you you may never go back there again but i will give you something else now look at me please we're about to pray God something else will always be better than what you had before. Find a way of believing what I'm telling you. When God brings any replacement to your life, it will always be better, more superior in quality. But the key is, do you have the courage to give him the ashes? Some of you have been holding the ashes of your pain for 10 years. You've been holding the ashes of regrets for 10 years. You've been holding the ashes of tragedy, financial tragedy, your health for 10 years. Jesus is coming by way of this message tonight and saying, hand it over to me. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay it down. For someone, you may not even hand it over. You may be like the woman with the alabaster box. You would just break that thing and say, ashes, you were once a tree. I played under your shade. I watched men cut you to become wood. I watched fire burn you to become coal. Now you are reduced to ashes. But I'm ready to lay it down because something else is coming. Let me tell you what happens. When you lay down the ashes, he will hold your hands and say, come. You will open up a realm and you will see many trees. You would see that it was an orchard he wanted to give you while you were weeping over a tree he now gives you an orchard and with that orchard you have many shades to lay in and also bring others into that experience ladies and gentlemen from a human standpoint there are people we may never stop missing we've loved people there are memories that may never leave our minds memories of yesterday but here's what the bible says this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for the things that are before me he didn't say forgetting the bad things i've taught you things don't have to be bad and tragic sometimes you have to just be strong to say you know what yesterday i wave you goodbye i love you i miss you i'll keep you in my mind but be gone for good i have to face the future because that destiny is waiting for me don't tell me about the story of something bad that happened do you know apostle i would have been married 20 years ago i understand can you hand over those ashes you are still holding on to it and many good men are coming now god is saying can't you see beauty you are saying ashes of yesterday are you willing to give that beauty and get out of the way i mean give the ashes and let beauty come I, my first car a ghastly motor accident destroyed it my first crusade nobody would leave all those things embrace the new is someone ready to pray go ahead and begin to speak to the lord everyone falling online and praying whether you are sitting whether you are standing take any position you're most comfortable but please pray pray everyone pray there is an answer to hopelessness there is an answer to despair 
there is an answer to confusing tragic situations the answer is found in this message that my god your god is able to make all things work together he may not have caused the all things the all things may not have come from him but he has the power to make all things sad stories all things negative stories all things tragic situations painful situations all things to work together to the good of them that love the lord and to those who are the called koinonia take a minute to invest in prayer beautiful ashes beautiful ashes turning my mourning to dancing my sorrow to joy that nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through christ someone is praying lord i know that it ends up in praise i lost my loved one but i choose to trust you it will end up in praise i lost my job but it will end up in praise i believe you for the visa i believe you for the healing i didn't want to go through the surgery now i'm having to go through it or i had to go through it now i've lost my organs but in the midst of it i still know that beauty can become a, a replacement for the ashes one more minute we are praying apostle i lost ministry to wrong mentorship I, I lost ministry i lost my place and my relevance to carelessness and licentiousness but the bible says there is hope listen carefully hear me ladies and gentlemen the bible tells you that there is hope and that hope make it not a shame when the tree is not caught the scent of water can bring it back to life but sometimes the tree can be cut away from the root, turned to lots of wood, burned to coals, then it becomes ashes. When it becomes ashes, don't try to make a tree out of it again. When it becomes ashes, look to the master. He comes with beauty. Joseph, don't just desire to return back to your father's house. That may not be your destiny again. That house you left, you have left for good. But look towards the assignment in the palace. There is a prime minister in you. There is an ordination upon your life. In Jesus' name we pray. I believe that this is also a message for Nigeria. Remember ye not the former things. There are things we'll never get back to, unfortunately. Discussing problems, blaming hands, pointing fingers may not do the job. I believe that our destiny by far exceeds our pain as a nation. This is also true for every African continent, uh, every African nation across the continent. Kenya, you find that Malawi, nations that have had uprisings and all kinds of things. One assurance, we may not know all the way it will happen, but that the future of Africa as a continent and of this great nation, I can tell you the glory that is coming over this nation will by far outweigh the pain, by far outweigh the moments of tragedies. You believe that? In the next one minute as responsible citizens and believers, invest prayer for Nigeria. Go ahead. Let's pray for Nigeria. We cannot be blind to the things that are happening. Pray for the government. Pray for the youth. Pray for the private sector. Pray for politicians. Pray for truthfulness and honesty. Pray that men, especially men in power, will look beyond themselves, be guided by the fear of the Lord, conscience, and a sense of posterity. Go ahead and pray for wisdom for the leadership at every level 
that they would come up with pragmatic intelligent applicable solutions the mountain that nigeria faces like many african countries is not insurmountable that we can shelve selfishness prejudices biases and face this mountain with honesty and solve this problem and scale to the next level of our prophetic destiny pray for every home pray that god will raise help nobody should sleep without food pray that god will raise help this is not a prayer for christians this is a prayer for all men christians muslims non-christians pray for everyone together that as a people we will enjoy the mercy of god pray that anyone who does not mean well for this nation that god will judge them that anyone who does not mean well for the people in this nation there will be no peace for them but pray that those who mean well for this nation wisdom be given to them power be given to them that those who mean well for our nation in the name of jesus christ they will find access pray for the government from the presidency the senate the house members the governors the local government chairman the ministers that they will serve their fatherland in truth void of selfishness in truth in jesus name we pray let me speak over your life as we wrap up the service we're closing early so that you can rush back home but before i speak over your life allow me the privilege of making an altar call for the fact that there are people here gathered tonight it was to be an entirely virtual service but we're honored to still have people who came around i cannot take the chance of assuming that everyone here within this place has made it right with jesus i cannot take the chance to assume that of the tens of thousands of people following across the social media space that everyone has made this decision for jesus you are in this place and you're saying apostle even though this is a virtual service now that i found myself here in this auditorium on hearing you speak i need jesus i need restoration to my spiritual life i need help from god or number two you are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity even though i'm far separated by distance across the nations i still want to receive this prayer i'm going to count one to five i need just one sincere person who is making this first decision or rededicating your life to jesus i want you to leave your seat and come and stand here if there is one person i am satisfied tonight god bless you come koinonia let's celebrate them god bless you thank you for the courage thank you sir thank you man come 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 god bless you koinonia keep clapping amazing what the lord has done for us intended to be a virtual service but he still brought many he still brought many are you clapping he still brought many who need to make it right come god bless you hallelujah now there are some of you who ordinarily should have been here but because we didn't allow you the liberty of coming to church physically please i want you to connect as i pray this prayer do not allow yourself to be robbed of an opportunity to make jesus lord of your life as i pray for these ones you're following me from your homes your offices everywhere be serious and make this decision this destiny defining decision for my dear brothers and sisters who are in front here thank you thank you i salute you for your courage to have come to make this decision for jesus let me request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and say this as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus those online here's your chance to join them say it again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i love you with all my heart 
I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God from tonight and forever. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. I declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I pray for you that from tonight, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you are empowered to live the victorious Christian life. From today, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please do me a favor. I want you to look to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who will have a word with you very quickly. Just a word and a prayer.